That was fucking scary, huh? Learn from my mistake. And I like to share these mistakes with you guys so you don't feel so bad when you make your own mistakes. Children crave labor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, YouTube? Melton Metal Anthony here with another one for you. Today, we're adding on to this staircase. We're making some repairs. We're extending the landing. We're doing a couple few things. I've started the morning off by putting my caution tape out, okay? If you've seen one of my past videos, you've seen that kid run right through the caution tape and right up the stairway that I was cutting apart. Then one of the workers at the school literally ran through my caution tape and up the stairways while we were cutting it apart. Stupid is as stupid does. We're gonna be adding an addition right there to the landing. They want it handicap accessible, which makes no sense because there's a stairway, but I don't make monkeys, I just train them. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my junior channel all cut up and make that little addition real quick. 20 inches, 45 degrees in. base plate up it's a six by six base plate it's a little unusual but i'm going to match the existing i'm going to start by doing my layout i'm going to get my mag drill out and then i'm going to blow the holes out before i completely cut this plate because there's not enough room on a six by six plate basically for me to to mag drill the holes that's what our base plate's going to look like i chose to use half inch which is what they should have initially used this is a renovation unfortunately they use like quarter inch plate for the base plates on the existing columns the issue with that is is they're kind of bent in and fucked up now because they're just too thin for the application. But not a big deal. Um, our column's gonna stiffen this thing up quite a bit. All right, our base plate is six by six. That means there's an inch and a half extra on each side between it and the column. Okay. Now we're using a five eighths redhead by five inch wedge anchor. About inch and a half, so half of inch and a half is three quarter. Center punch this to give our mag drill a spot to grab onto. Okay, we've got our base plate all drilled out. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw out the C-channel that's going to attach to the wall up there on the landing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to divide 20 inches, because this is 20 inches long, into three parts. And that's going to give me my two hole placements. So, uh, so 20 divided by three is like six and then six repeating. So we're going to go ahead and do about five eighths. This doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't really matter. Make sure we get it kind of square. Doesn't Again, doesn't really need to be perfect but I do like things to be as perfect as I can make them. Our five inch mark, this is a 10 inch channel. It's a junior channel. So there we go. Those are our two holes we're gonna need to drill out into this channel. All right, so we've got our holes all drilled out. They're nice and even. Right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna blow this thing out with a torch. So what you see me doing here is running my grinder over the mark because when you mark things with Sharpie on metal, the torch will make it disappear. Now this little trough that's made out of angle iron in the back of my bed is one of my favorite features. It keeps the slag from going everywhere and messing up a customer's floor. Especially if you're on top of concrete, you don't want hot slag to pop up the customer's concrete. That could be a very costly mistake for you. This was a pipeliner's bed originally, and what they would use this for is rolling pipe out and holding material. I use it for that too, but I mostly use it for this. It's okay, so definitely not perfect, but uh, it'll clean up really nice. You can see where my hand got a little shaky, but That'll do. All right, because they're down here working on putting a pad in for me to set the column on top of, I'm gonna go up there and cut out and replace some of the rotten handrail that's up there. As you can see, the rest of the rail looks pretty good, but up here, it's rotten through. So I'm simply just gonna cut this top section and remove it. Unfortunately, just found out that these are out of code. They're about five inches. So the quick solution is just to put a piece of bar in the center of each of these. So that's what we're gonna do. I've just ordered the metal, but for now I'm gonna cut this off, replace this. When we get that new piece of metal in, then we'll weld everything all the way out. 
When you run into a situation like this with a contracting job, you need to submit what's called a change order. And that gives the customer time to either approve or deny the cost change in the job. All right, so we're gonna replace about 20 inches of this rail, and you can see why I'm doing 20. You see it's kinda, I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. It's rotten until about right there, and that's about 20 inches right there. So we're just gonna replace 20 inches of this. We're just gonna notch this off, take it out. The rest of it looks in pretty good shape, but this whole fucking section was bad. Over there looks in pretty good shape. I wire wheeled it up and knocked out anything that was loose, and we're gonna to be able to save that too. And then we're gonna to have to scoot this out 20 inches because that's what our landing is gonna do. So we're gonna need a 20 inch piece that goes right here as well. The reason we needed to extend the landing 20 inches out was according to an inspector, it needed to be handicap accessible. Ironically, he caught that, but not the five inch spacing between the railings, which is a code. That was fucking scary, huh? Good thing I got good fucking reaction time. As I'm prepping the pickets, I'm inspecting each one to make sure none of them are rusted out, making sure everything is structurally sound. See, this is a pretty extensive project. I mean, they're moving plumbing, ripping down walls, getting up into the ceiling, and I'm playing a very, very small part in this one. So, yeah, this is a big one. Huge building, it's gotta be 10,000 square feet. I wonder if they'll be doing any structural steel in here besides the railings and the stairway. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to weld this top rail on. I don't know how that's going to go, considering uh, all I have is 332nd, 7018. I can't flux core weld. I'm getting like 30 mile per hour gusts up here, so it is what it is. Excellent. Nice good cut in my fucking hand. It's a good fucking day. But really, I'm about my fucking have my goddamn kill for today. Okay guys, that is the end of the first day. I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but I think my welding rod is bad. Um, I was having some real trouble welding it. I don't know if you guys caught that on the camera, uh, but I'm gonna have to cut a couple welds out. It happens. So tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come with a brand new roll of flux core. Hopefully the wind that has been horrible today doesn't affect it, but we'll see. But as you can see, I'm all cleaned up. Got some caution tape going across there. And um, I might put another piece, uh, just kind of crisscross there, just to, you know, say, hey, look, don't fuck up. And um, I'll probably put a piece up there, just in case before I get here in the morning, some one of the people who works in the building, believe it or not, yes, there's people working in the building, doesn't come walking through. But all right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Guys, I am back at this stairway for day two. I made some pretty bad welds up yesterday because I just could not get that 6013 16th rod to run correctly. So we're gonna switch over to some flux core and my flux core was running bad the last time I used it. So I was kind of wary of that, but now that I'm looking real close, I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if you can see those speckles, right there's a good example of the stuff on the flux core wire. I was getting nothing but porosity out of this. And I think moisture had gotten into this. Like an idiot, I left it in my box down in there um, didn't take my wire out and learn from my mistake. You know, this is a $25 roll of wire that is now going to go in the trash. Put, take your flux core out of your machine and find a dry spot for it. This shit is super sensitive. I mean, it's some decent Lincoln wire. It's no bullshit. And um, it still got all fucked up because I didn't do a basic thing. And it's something that I know to do. And I like to share these mistakes with you guys so you don't feel so bad when you make your own mistakes. Because uh, you will. Don't let these fucking people pretend like they don't make mistakes because they fucking do. We're all people. All right, so I've got some brand new flux core wire. This is Hobart. I'm a real big fan of Hobart wire. So you can see right there, it's not a bad looking weld. Well, I haven't knocked the slag off that one, but as you can see we weren't getting perfect welds every time. I was doing the same thing every time, but the rod was just popping and pissing on me a lot. So like I said, not a big deal. We'll just cut out the bad ones and then try to replace it with some flux core. Just 
got to be the greasiest piece of metal I've ever gotten in my entire life. Um, I went around, I fixed most of the welds. I got a spot here I gotta continue to fix, but um, I needed a break, so I went down and I'm just wiping off the, the grease on these top rails. Basically all these do is just sit right on top just like that. And that's gonna match everything else out. But they were pretty rotten on the, on the other one, so I decided to go and get some new ones from King Metals. So finally the wind subsided and I'm starting to get a much better product out of this flux core than I was with the other stuff. So I'm leaving a slight gap in between the rails and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of fill that in with welds so that way it blends up nice. Uh, but what I'm gonna first do is align it down on this end and then I'll go ahead and get it over there at that end and then just blend it together. And then we just got a little piece here to fill in. So it's not the perfect fit up. Well, once I get it into place, it'll work out pretty good. It'll look good once I get done blending it and everything, so. Hey, we got the top rail on. You can see the flux core is welding pretty decent. No defects. Not exactly the prettiest shit ever. All right, so we got a pretty decent fit up. I'm gonna go ahead and weld this thing out. So the welds came out decent, except where I blew through right there and I just kind of had to tack her up. But I'll grind that off, you'll never be able to tell. Um, that's just what happens when you're dealing with uh, stuff that has a little bit of rust in it. It's just kind of par for course. Next I'm gonna fire the engine drive up and then I'm gonna go ahead and start building this landing. The only thing I'm concerned about is carrying that one long piece of C-channel by myself. I might be able to get one of these guys here to give me a hand. That would be nice. So I'm tacking this up with 7018, and the reason is is 7018 has more elongation than 6010. What elongation is is basically the ability to flex the weld before breaking. Before I go ahead and weld this all the way out, I'm gonna hammer drill and anchor this thing into the wall. That way it doesn't pull when I weld it. What I'm doing here is checking the slope of my landing. Eighth per foot is code, or 1% of the total slope. Alright, so it's lunchtime. The guys who work in the building actually brought me a sandwich. That was really nice of them. They're really nice people here. Um, I gave them a really good price here and I'm, I'm glad I did because they deserve it. So what this facility is being converted into is a school for mentally handicapped children. So it's really not terrible. Nothing's pitted through. Everything's within tolerance. It seems okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some angle iron and we're just gonna run some in a couple of select spots. So what I'm doing here is welding on a support piece to keep that C channel straight and square. Now I'm just using my large 12 inch speed square just to make sure it's all squared up. Here I'm just tacking it to the support to make sure it doesn't move on me while I weld it out. Put a pallet on it and lift 
does right up. You can fit the tractor in here? I go pull it right here. I go like, boop, I lift right up. So here's a couple of the roots. Not great, not horrible. Um, see them telegraphing through. So pretty decent. I'll weld the outside as well as the inside of this corner. And uh, this is just going to get it on the inside. No big deal. I left a little gap so that way uh, water could shed. Uh, nothing is plumbing level on this thing. So. I'm just kind of making do, not a big deal. Not, I've never ran into one of these that was fully plumbing level. I think they settle over the years. But um, yeah, we're gonna weld this thing out. Nothing exciting happened here. And then we're gonna add that angle iron I cut earlier up in the underneath here to give this pan a little extra support. Okay, so the little piece of landing I needed to put in is all together. Now I just need to put some high temp primer on uh, these pieces here so that the back sides don't rust out when I butt them up against the other metal up there. That's basically what I'm gonna do today. I can't really do too much else because as it turns out, they poured the footer in the wrong location. I actually need it right there. Kind of my fault. I should have pulled the plumb bob out and uh, did that in front of them, but it's also kind of their fault because I did say, hey, it's in front of this, whatever. All right, guys, I am back for day three. I had to wait this morning on the concrete guy to come and he corrected where they put that footer. So that should be good to go. Probably, I think by tomorrow, I'll ask him before he leaves. I got Herminio here. He's, up, he's up there putting the uh, pickets um, in between the rails because these are way out of code. So he's gonna be taking care of that for me. Was it ever five inches code? I don't know. I have that's, no idea. That's crazy. Huh? That's what it is. But uh, while he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the rest of the angle iron up that I gotta do. All right, so that's what I'm talking about right there. I just get the angle up underneath there, just get some additional support to this decking. So I've got those welded up there. I'm not gonna bother cleaning the slag off because well, this is getting fucking sandblasted. Why would I waste my time? Herminio is a subcontractor, so what I like to do instead of trying to find employees, I like to try to find guys who are very capable of welding and then offer to subcontract them and help them get their own business started. All right, I've got most everything welded up in here. I just gotta put two more pieces of angle in the end there, and then I'm gonna move on to the new construction there. All right, so the next thing we need to do 
is we need to go ahead and mark three inches down all the way around this. Perfect. All right, I know nothing's going over there, so I'm not gonna waste my time putting that in. Oh, here's a little problem. Our level's too long. Let me go get my small level. Small little Johnson level. I'm gonna match the slope of this because it does about an eighth per foot. But what I did was match this and this is actually a quarter per foot. But you do need to have some sort of drainage slope on your landing so that they don't collect water. So unfortunately, whoever built this originally did a quarter per foot. So mine's an eighth per foot. I did jack it up a little bit, but uh, we don't wanna jack it up too much because then I'll create a water collection point between this and this. I know a lot of you retards are gonna comment on that. Like, oh, you should have ripped the whole fucking thing down. And fucking so I'm making so you guys can see that. So you see it's level. And then all I do is just run my chalk right across it, or soapstone, or whatever the fuck you wanna call it. The next thing I need to do is go ahead and mark out where the angle irons are gonna go in there to hold the pan up. I want them to look even. They don't really necessarily need to be. There is no code on the spacing uh, for this that I'm aware of. Um, so I'm putting three in, which is way overkill. There's only four in this, but better safe than sorry, right? So it's about 75 and a half inches. You have to divide that by four because if we do divide it by four, we'll have three sections. Just like if you need two sections or two pieces put in, you need to divide it by three. So divided by four, we got 18 and three quarter, roughly. It's a little more than that. It's like 18 and seven eighths technically, but I'm not too worried. You're not gonna see a 16th or eighth of an inch by eye, so. I don't know if you noticed, if you wiggle the stairway yet? Yeah. The whole oh, fucking thing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna stiffen it up quite a bit, I think, I hope. But, I mean, it's been there for fucking 30 years, so... It's been there as long as I've been alive. I remember this stairway when I was a kid. going to be the rest of the picket material for him to finish his job. As you can see, he's already started. He's doing a fantastic job down there. But that's what the rest of it's going to look, up, look like all the way up to put all this back into code. So Herminio is one of five subcontractors that I use. And they're all the best of the best. Every one of my guys is very good at what they do. Herminio is one of my best railing and aluminum subcontractors. All right. So that was the last structural weld I needed to make uh, for all this. The only structural welds I have left is the column, but I'm still waiting on that shitty concrete to dry. Unfortunately, the guy who put it in doesn't know what the fuck plumbing level is, and it is still out of level. Whatever, I'll compensate for it in the column. But... Other than that, Herminio's making pretty good progress down there. He's cutting up a shitload of pickets. He's excited. He's probably going to make a fucking couple. He's going to make a good amount of money in two days here because I take care of my guys. This sad fucking sack of a fucking. Look at this. Separating. The kids all fucking uneven. A fucking idiot. So off camera, me and Herminio went ahead and took our measurement of our column. It was 119 and 3 16 total height. But our base plate is a half of an inch. I'm also gonna deduct another 16 just in case because the concrete is a little uneven. So we'll probably deduct even a little bit more, but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this thing out and then cut it. So 118 and 11 16 
sound like this is a tree. I used to be a land clearing guy, so I cut a lot of trees. When you cut a tree, you always want to cut most of the way to the top and then come up from the bottom because the, the tree is going to let go of the chainsaw. You won't get a bound saw and you won't break your uh, bar. Well, I'm going to treat this the same way because I don't have the option to hang it up right here. So it's hard to tell on the camera, but I'm actually cutting the bottom corner. I couldn't cut all the way underneath of it because the cutoff wheel is too big. So I just ought to do the bottom corner. You see how well that works. But some of you are going to ask, why are you going to put a top cap on it? No, I'm not going to. It's going underneath of the landing. Besides, I'm going to hot rod a hole through the base plate once it's welded on. I like to take my fireball tool square on. Whenever I'm tacking something, even if it's jigged up, to keep it square, I like to treat it like I'm tightening lug nuts on a tire. Start at one corner, move to the far corner, and then work your way around. I also like to leave it in the jigs for as long as possible. I find I get a better product like that, and things just come out a little bit more square and straight when I'm done. When you're in the structural steel realm or really any place where you've just made a fresh weld, it's always good practice to paint your weld as soon as you're done and any holes that bolts might slip through. I honestly didn't even know Hermione was filming me. I'll have to ask him for that video, I guess. All right, guys, Herminio's heading out. He uh, got a good amount of picket stuff. He has everything cut except for the top rail ones, but he's making great progress, way better than I would have done, so I appreciate that, brother. Absolutely, man. Yes, anything for multi metal anything. <laughs> so uh, all I got left to do is weld that column out, and then tomorrow, whenever I get a chance, I just need to come and drop the pan in there and then weld that through. Herminio's going to take care of the rest of the railing stuff for me, yeah. so that's awesome. But... uh. All right, let's finish this thing up. If you get to the point in the game where you're just too busy to take all the work that's coming your way, you need to find subcontractors that are better than you at certain aspects of welding. And then that way you sub them on the jobs that you're not so good at and maximize your profit. So my phone died mid-weld. So what you guys missed was just me priming all the shit that I welded. Not really anything to write home to mom about. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty fucking good. The owner came out, he was extremely happy. We took a little bit of that wobble out of the stairway, but because they got it like fucking two inches off the ground over there and like a quarter inch over there. It, it still just does what it wants. But it's a lot better than it was. And this thing is definitely a lot more sound than it was. So um, the last thing for me to do is just throw some decking in. I have a job I, can, I can't start until midnight tonight. So I'm gonna go over there and do that. And then uh, whenever I get up and I get over here, I told the owner I would come and finish this and just throw the decking in there. Like I said, Herm Herminio took the contract for the railing. He's doing a fantastic job. Before I to drop this in, I'm gonna go ahead and split it down the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna probably put a patch piece in there in the center where the seam is. That way I can pop one end in and then pop the other. Whenever you're welding decking down, you ideally wanna use 6022, which is a decking specific rod. I wasn't going to go out and buy a pack of it just for this little tiny job because Lord knows when I'm going to do decking again. Flux core will suffice for this. Right, guys my portion is done the decking is done it's just up to herminio and his boy they're gonna go ahead and take care of the rest of the railing i got full confidence it's gonna come out beautiful yes, sir. turns out his boy is quite the fit man too he yeah. actually cut the rest of the pickets herminio uh told me so that's cheap pretty labor. cool cheap labor <laughs> no that's good you got to work your kids that's for sure they ch children crave labor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'm melton metal anthony if you like what you saw here that's great like subscribe share if you didn't well you know what to do go fuck yourself